Please welcome to the stage, Gigi Lee! <laughs> So I grew up in Miami. Yeah, 305. <laughs> 305 till I die. Uh, my, my family is Korean and I have two younger brothers. And my middle brother, who is uh, two years younger than me, has this story about my mom that's become like family lore at this point. So when my brother was nine, he and my mom went to the mall uh, because they were gonna return a pair of sneakers for him at the Foot Locker. And my mom is this tiny Korean woman. Her English isn't great. Um, she makes up her own like English phrases. Like instead of saying, excuse me, when she goes up to someone, she'll say, do me a favor, please. <laughs> I don't know where she learned this from, but to this day, that is her opening line. So she's at the Foot Locker. She goes up to the sales guy and she says, do me a favor, please. My son wore these shoes one time they don't fit, I want my money. And the sales guy's like, ma'am, I'm so sorry, but we only give refunds on unworn items. And this upsets my mother. And you can tell she's upset because it looks like smoke is blowing out of her nose, like she's like a cartoon bull. And she's like shaking the sneakers and she says, you gave me bad sneakers, I want my money, give me my money. And the guy's like, ma'am, please calm down. And this upsets my mother even more. And she takes the sneakers and she throws them on the ground. And my poor nine-year-old brother, I think he's like hiding behind a shoe display. And the guy's like, ma'am, I'm sorry, but it's against store policy. And my mom, who misunderstands them, says, I don't care if you call the police. <laughs> so this is what we grew up with. Um, so now fast forward, uh, I'm an adult and I'm engaged to my boyfriend of two years, Patrick. And what I love most about Patrick is that he's so calm. Um, we could have a flight that's delayed for like five hours and he'll just say, oh, more time for my crosswords. <laughs> um, so, but now that we were getting married, my family was going to meet his family for the first time. And his family was a little different. Um, they're from Maryland, they go to museums, they read The New Yorker. Um, they are white people, in case you couldn't tell. Um, and at the dinner table, they always have like formal place settings with china and folded cloth napkins. My family, we didn't use place settings. And instead of cloth napkins, we used a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> it wasn't stylish, but it was functional. Uh, and my family, we will argue over anything. Um, a fight over the TV remote will turn into a bloodbath. Uh, Patrick's family, I've never seen them argue. The closest was when he and his dad disagreed over the right way to carve a turkey. It was pretty <laughs> intense. Uh, I don't remember what the right way was because I was too busy eating the turkey later. Um, but you know what, I love my family. They made me who I am, uh, a person who is overly like, nice to salespeople. And, and Patrick's family has been nothing but like nice and, and loving and accepting of me, but also because I've only showed them like my good side, like my elite college side that my parents went into debt for. So like, I know how to act like Frasier around them, you know, like, I, I like Sherry. Um, but now they're about to meet like all sides of me, like Frasier's dad. Um, so now it's the weekend of the wedding. We're all in Maryland. My family flies in, it's my mom, my dad, and my youngest brother, uh, the middle brother of the Foot Locker story. Um, he did not come for whatever family drama of the week. Uh, and I think, you know what? One less relative, less drama, that's great. And my mom arrives at the airport and she's like, oh, I couldn't sleep for the past three months. Does Patrick's family like ginseng tea? Oh, I should have brought ginseng tea. And my brother and my dad are just like, hey, um, as if they just traveled all this way to like see me get braces or something. Uh, so that evening is the rehearsal dinner and, and uh, Patrick's sister has organized uh, beforehand uh, a manicure session for all the women to like get to know each other in like a low key way. And I think, oh, there's like no salespeople involved. Great. <laughs> so my mom and I, we go to the nail salon and it's like a typical nail salon, what you'd see in Manhattan, like not too fancy. Uh, but my mom is like wearing like a new dress and she's wearing like jewelry for the first time. 
And she meets Patrick's mom and his sister. They're like, hi, Miss Lee. Like, we're all just very polite. Like, we're all pretty nervous. And so then we all go to our individual nail stations. And I'm sitting here. My mom's to my left. And Patrick's mom and his sister are a couple of tables away. So we're not really close enough to really talk to each other. And I think, this is great. Like, this is ideal. And, and then my mom's manicurist comes over. And she's Asian. And I think, oh, maybe this will make my mom feel more comfortable because this is my mom's first time getting her nails done. But my mom makes a face. It's just a slight flinch, but I know that face. My entire life, I have feared that face. Because when your mother erupts like Mount Vesuvius, you read the signs. But she doesn't say anything. And I think, oh my god, maybe like she's not going to have any drama for her only daughter's wedding weekend. And I like start to relax, and a couple of minutes pass, and I hear some commotion. And I look over, and my mother is glaring at her manicurist. And I ask her in Korean, what's wrong? And my mother says, she told me to pay up front. What she did is not right. And my mom, this, since this is her first time getting her nails done, she didn't realize that you pay first, because otherwise, you ruin the base coat. <laughs> and I'm like trying to explain this to her in Korean, like, you no, know, you smudge the base coat. Like, she doesn't think you're going to skip on the bill. You don't want to... I'm like, well, how do you say base code in Korean? But my mom isn't listening to me. She's just, like, waving her hand at this manicurist. She says, that's not right. What you're doing is not right. And the manicurist just looks at me like, can you fix this? Because I have a lot of other customers. <laughs> um, and I'm, like, trying to whisper yell at my mom because I don't want anyone else to hear. So I'm just like, just pay. Just pay her, okay? Stop it. And meanwhile, I look over at Patrick's mom and his sister, and like they don't even realize what's going on. They're just like, la di da looking at the TV, like Hoda and Kathy. And I'm like, stop it, just stop it. And my mom turns to me and says, in English, I'm only staying here because of you. So the one time she uses perfect English is to insult me during my wedding weekend. And so I yank her, and I say, we're getting out of here. And so now Patrick's mom has noticed, and she asks, where are you going? We haven't even done the pedicures yet. And I'm like smiling with like tears streaming down my face. And I'm like, oh, it's OK. Like, I mean, my nails are still wet, but whatever. It's, it's just my wedding. We have to leave. So my mom and I go outside. It's just me and her. All bets are off. And I say, get in the fucking cab. And I turn to the cab driver. Uh, we'll be going to the Marriott in Bethesda, please. Thank you. <laughs> and the entire cab ride is just silent. And we get to the hotel, we go our separate ways, and I, and I meet up with Patrick, and I'm like, I can't believe, like, who has a fight at a nail salon? And then I think about the rehearsal dinner and how it's at his aunt and uncle's house, and it's catered, and I tell Patrick, we have to cancel the rehearsal dinner. And he's hugging me, and he says, I'm so sorry that you feel so upset, but um, people paid a lot of money for this, so I'm going to need you to get it together. <laughs> I'm like, did you not just hear what I said? One of my mom starts like flinging plates at people. She's capable of anything. She's my mother. But I knew he was right. And plus, like, the dinner was an hour away. So just logistically, like, we couldn't cancel. <laughs> so we arrive at the dinner. And uh, my mom's acting like nothing's happened. And people start giving toasts. And they're really beautiful toasts. And my mom starts to cry. And my mom never cries. She makes other people cry, but she doesn't. <laughs> And I go up to her and I say, Mom, what's wrong? Did a waiter look at you wrong? And she says, you know, now that you're getting married, you're not my daughter anymore. You're not part of Patrick's family. And I felt so bad because this entire time, I was so worried about his family judging my mom. And I, of course, judged her the most. And this is a woman who came to this country at 25, didn't know anyone, didn't know the language, raised three rambunctious kids who only ever wanted to go to the mall. And I could kind of see why she'd get irritated. And so I hugged her and I told her I loved her. Um, but you know, it was my wedding weekend and I was like, I'm gonna need everyone to get it together. Even you, mom, love you. Um, and after that, like all tension broke and the wedding itself was beautiful. Um, and after that, Patrick and I set off on our honeymoon. And, and we go to Antigua, and we're on this beautiful Caribbean beach, like all tension behind us. And I decide to buy a sun hat. And I think, oh, I want to look like Grace Kelly. So I buy this hat, <laughs> and I try it on, and I notice the strap is broken. So I go up to the street vendor, I'm like, oh yeah, it, like, 
the strap is broken, so I'd like a refund, please. And she's like, no, can't. I'm like, um, you sold me a damaged hat. I want my money. Can you give me my money? <laughs> and Patrick's just like shaking his head. He's like, Gigi, please, not on our honeymoon. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I'm becoming my mother. 